So this is the light used by roughly 2 billion people in the world. And you, you can see it's not just light, it comes with other associated things. So this isn't, this isn't a viable solution long term. It's dirty. Inhaling all of this stuff is a big public health hazard. Sorry. Two million people die every year from indoor air pollution, multiple sources. Acute respiratory infection, of which this is a contributor, is the number one killer of children under five. And so it was this problem that led me to start looking at dirt power, soil microbes to power light. So this is the story of our work in this space. So this is what it looks like in many houses across the world. Lighting affects everyone in the family. Children are using it to do homework. Men and women are using it to read, to study. Everyone is using it to socialize. It's light. It's essential. A big part of the problem, though, is that this light is used inside the home. The home is designed to keep the elements out, but in this case, it keeps the beast inside the cage. And unfortunately, we've kind of locked ourselves inside with it. So we wanted to look and see, could we clean this up? Could we take a household that looks more like the one on your left and make it more like the one on the right by introducing clean lighting? And so we did this, actually. We did a study in, Euro, in rural Uganda to look at what would happen if we cleaned up the lighting. And we looked at a couple of different things. Specifically, we looked at particulates in the air. We filtered the air in homes where we had introduced clean lighting versus homes that were continuing to use kerosene. And the result was very, very striking. The filters were clogging very, very quickly with all the particulate matter in the air particulate matter specifically known to be associated with respiratory illness, whereas in the intervention homes that were now using clean lighting, this very closely mirrored what we were finding just out of doors. What was even more impressive to us was the actual health improvement that these families had. We had these two groups of families, and at the end of several, only several months of using clean lighting, Families who had been using clean lighting were reporting 25% less rates, lower rates of illness, were reporting almost 30% lower rates of cough, and over 50% lower rates of sore throat. Just from using clean lighting, probably in addition to using their other lighting, but they were just using it less, um, again, after only a few months. Now, that was, that was really exciting to us. So given all of this, cleaner air, better health, why would anyone not use clean lighting? I mean, clean lighting is technically available. For example, solar power, it's pretty mature technology at this point. Yet 2 billion people, again, are still using kerosene. So we actually spoke to a lot of the family members that we were talking, working with in Uganda, and they told us a number of things, but the same theme came up multiple times. One is, you know, we just don't have it here. A second is, well, yeah, some, some places sell it, some people have it, but it's really expensive, and so we don't really, we can't really afford it. And then also we hear, well, we used to have one, but it broke, and we couldn't buy a new one, and we couldn't fix it. So we wanted to think about ways that we could address specifically these three big issues. So we hit on dirt. Dirt is everywhere. It's really cheap, even free, and it doesn't break. Turns out you can use it as a power source, which was really intriguing to us. I mean, you know, stick two electrodes in the ground and all of a sudden, you know, light grows out of it. This was, this was a fascinating idea to us. This is an uh, example of one of the devices that we use in our lab. The technical term of our dirt batteries is microbial fuel cell, and it utilizes the normal metabolism of naturally occurring soil microbes to produce small amounts of power. So this is a schematic. And to give you a little bit of a sense of how these work, so there are, there are lots of millions and millions of microbes in, in all soil, naturally occurring. 
So what we do is we, we get them to grow in a relatively oxygen-free environment down at the bottom. And in the course of their metabolizing organic molecules, they pull off electrons. And since it's a low oxygen environment, they end up dumping them onto the, our anode down here at the bottom. These electro electrons that they've dumped now travel through a wire and can be used to um, power, for example, an LED. Produces a very small current. Now, there, it sounds super exciting and super cool, and it is. Just there are a number of challenges associated with using this as a practical source of energy, particularly in low-resource environments. So typically speaking, in a laboratory environment, these cells are made of fairly expensive materials. They can be somewhat complicated, and their power output is actually fairly low. And so we wanted to try to address some of these problems. We were fortunate to um, have some support from the Gates Foundation to try to see what we could do to make this into a more practical energy source. So to address some of the, the expense, expensive materials, mechanical issues, first, we, designed, we wanted to design an MFC Lego something that we can make cheaply out of locally available materials and that could really be very modular and used in parallel with others of its kind. So our initial models were actually not shown here. They were actually built in large Legos. Uh, and then we ended up designing this out of cheap plastic laser cut layers. We modified the design somewhat to create something that was going to be more amenable to mass production, and we made several hundred of these, which was very cool. They are modular, they work, and you can stack them in many hundreds to produce larger amounts of power. One thing that we did notice when building these guys is that they weren't always producing the same amounts of power. So all cells are not created equal, even if supposedly you've made them in exactly the same way which to a scientist is really very frustrating. <laughs> so you'll have a couple that are producing fairly low amounts of power, and then you'll have one that just is off the charts. So we tried to figure out what this was, and then finally we said, OK, stand back. We're going to try sequencing them and figuring out what's inside. And we discovered that it was a bug. No, really, it was an actual bug. This bug. So we had a number of Pseudomonas species growing in this power, these powerful cells, which was not the case in the others. Now, if any of you are associated with medicine, and, and I heard Pseudomonas, and I cringe, because when I think of Pseudomonas, I think of more something like this. They produce, they're very ominous in fact. They can produce bad infections. I don't like them at all but they are naturally occurring soil microbes. One of the reasons they, they are so virulent is because they produce toxins, oxidizing agents like pyocyanins and phenazines. And so we conjectured, well, if these phenazines and pyocyanins, these oxidizing agents, are making them more efficient at dumping electrons onto our electrodes, but what if we did something like introduce them without, introduce those agents without the pseudomonas to see if we'll be able to reproducibly make these more powerful cells? Now, what we didn't want to do is fall into the trap of the expensive and toxic materials. So we look primarily at agricultural waste because a lot of the households that are our ultimate target audience are farmers. And we ended up noticing that blood meal actually has a lot of iron two and a lot of nitrogen that can be used as oxid uh, oxidizing agents, so electron acceptors. And so when we introduced this material, which conveniently is available as a fertilizer here in the US, the power output increased by uh, over 100 fold if, if you combine all of our, all of our um, adjustments to the, to the technology. So this was super exciting to us because now, when we have these and we have our modular cells, we can use this technology to power lights. So this is our, our cheap African version in Tupperware, um, powering an LED. And we were actually able to use them to charge a cell phone. So this 
is a very exciting and, and a growing opportunity in the lighting space. And I hope that it it makes a it ultimately makes a difference in in changing household lightings to look more like this than the than the original image. And I'd like to thank all of my colleagues and collaborators as well as our supporters in the lab where we did this work. Thank you.